to NPS Now, your source for news and information about Norfolk Public Schools. I'm your host, Karen Tanner. And on this episode of NPS Now, we're going to interview our 2015 Teacher of the Year and some of our top high school grads here on NPS Now. But first, I'd like to welcome our 2015 Teacher of the Year, Desiree DeMart from Maury High School. Welcome to NPS Now. Thank you was exciting night. I enjoyed it. We recognized you and some of our Inspiration Award winners. When they started to read your description of the Teacher mm -hmm. of the Year, when the three of you were standing on the stage, what did you think? Well, when they said the word she, you know, I got a little, I, I paid a little <laughs> closer attention. Um, and, you know, as they kept reading, I realized that they were speaking of me. Um, and then I saw my principal stand up, so but she gave it away. <laughs> well, I, I already I already surmised um, that they were speaking about me, and it was it was surreal. It what? really was. Um, I, I just wouldn't have expected. What does this award and your selection as the 2015 Teacher of the Year mean to you? It's an honor. It's it's a, a huge honor, and you know it's you, you do what you do every day, and you don't expect anything. But when you're recognized for all that you do it's it's very rewarding um, my students have been awesome about it you know they've they've clapped for me they all come in showing me pictures that they have of me on their cell phones and <laughs> um, it's just it's it's been a real honor what do you do in the classroom to make you so successful and to motivate your students because they mentioned some great things about you um, honestly, I, th I think that the most important thing that a teacher can do is build relationships with their students. Um, I'm very personable with them. We, we have a very good rapport. I get to know them. I call them all by name all the time, you know, from the beginning of the year. And uh, my classroom is very interactive. Um, I don't just teach, we interact. Uh, I question them, all the students, I question them every day, multiple times. Um, and and I just I feel like the more you involve your students and the more um, yes. you get to know them, the better they'll do. What subject do you teach here in Norfolk? I teach honors algebra two. Honors algebra two. Mm -hmm. So walk me through a typical day in your class. Okay. Well, they come in and they know immediately when they come in that they sit down and do the daily math review, and that will be um, just questions from previous tests or anything I think that they're struggling with from the past, it's not current material, just to keep them fresh and to make sure they, they understand, you know, that it's never going away. We're going to use it over and over again. And, you know, we sit down and we do that for about the first maybe 10 minutes. They do the questions. Um, I just say, you know, whoever wants it, go to the board and do it. They, uh, they go up and do the problems themselves and then we go through them. Um, and then while we're going through them, I ask a ton of questions to everyone else, you know, who hasn't, you know, been to the board. Um, do a lot of follow-up questions with why and how do you know, and um, that just gets the day going. And then, you know, they know that we're going to do notes. Um, the notes, though, are, you know, we do maybe 10 minutes of notes, and then I start having them try things, and I ask a bunch of questions. And we just, it's just very interactive, very relaxed. And it sounds like it's very interactive, and mm -hmm. they also described you as having a ping pong club. What's that about? Yeah, um, you know, I had I had a few students come to me this year, and they said, you know, we we really want to do something. We want to we'd like to have a ping pong club. Well, the first thing they said was, you know, would you be interested in coaching? And I said, Ian, not really. <laughs> and they said, well, we want to have a ping pong club. And I'm like, oh, well, that I can do. Um, I've never played ping pong, but you know, I figured how hard could it be? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I just basically go there and facilitate. I don't, I don't coach anything. Um, and it's kind of turned into not just ping pong, but more like open gym. Um, mm -hmm. We'll play ping pong for about 45 minutes and then they, you know, they'll play basketball or whatever. And it's just, it's just a time for those kids who don't have anything else going on after school to go in the gym and have, you know, some downtime and have some fun. So do you think that relates to or has some correlation between their success in the classroom and then having this fun time? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, of course, I take every opportunity I can to mention math and, you know, what do you have to do for me today before you can play? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, Miss Michaels coaches with me, you know, she does the ping pong club with me, and we take time to tutor kids during that time. So while they're out playing ping pong, 
we'll have you know some kids come in and get some tutoring uh, some one-on-one -on -one time so they know that we're there in the gym on Tuesdays after school. Dr. Thornton was describing you and mm -hmm. he was talking about your high pass and success rates. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, I have been very fortunate uh, to have some high pass rates and you know I think it is that I just um, I don't let it go ever and I tell the kids this time of year SOL time is that's the time we are serious um, I said I will I will follow you in the halls I will get what I need from you I will pull you from your electives I won't stop until I'm satisfied that you are going to do well on this test so you and your team uh, several a couple years ago possibly mm -hmm. had the highest pass rates in the state of Virginia mm hmm yeah um, we we just really work hard we are diligent about what we do we make sure that the kids get everything they need and you know we we over teach it absolutely because we don't just want them to pass we want them to pass advance mm -hmm. and so you know I've, I've told my kids this year you know we're, we're gonna start a 600 club because I'm not interested in the bare minimum I have honors kids so I'm interested in pass advance and, and perfect scores and they know that so you were selected as teacher of the year but you're one of the eighth teachers from Maury selected mm -hmm. for this honor. What does that mean to you? Well, it, it, it means to me that we, we have a really good teaching team at Maury. Um, we have a lot of support. Our administration is great and they support us at every turn and we, we get what we need and it makes our jobs a lot easier, um, a lot more fun, mm -hmm. and, and we're able to get done what we need to get done. During this episode of MPS Now, we're going to be interviewing some top grads, and I'm mm -hmm. going to ask them what is an advice that they would give a rising senior. So what advice would you, as a successful teacher, mm -hmm. give a fellow teacher about being successful in the classroom? I would say, you know, just get to know your students. You, it, none of this can happen unless you really know your students. That is, to me, that is key. That is the, the number one thing you have to do. Um, if you don't build a, a good, strong relationship with your, with your students, you don't, you're missing. You're missing what the potential could be. You're missing out on all that they could give you. And, and they want to. The better you know them, the more they want to do, not just for themselves, but also for you. They want you to be proud. And you know, if, if, if you have a relationship, that strong relationship with them, they're going to want to do more. Mm -hmm. And spending that quality time with the extra clubs and activities mm -hmm. to Absolutely. motivate them. Absolutely. Absolutely. They appreciate that, you know. They, they want to have that interaction with the teachers. They really do. And any opportunity you can take to have that interaction with them is really priceless. Great. And thank you for coming on the show. Fresh off your win as 2015 Teacher of the Year. We hope to hear great things about you this upcoming school year. Thank you very much. Thank you. We want you to stay tuned for more MPS Now. Welcome back to MPS Now. I'm Steve Sutmiller, Senior Coordinator of Athletics. Middle school championships just ended, so let's take a look at some of the championship highlights, starting with tennis. In one semifinal, you had Maeve Stiles serving against Seda McMorris. Here, McMorris' forehand is too much for Stiles to handle. On this point, McMorris uses her blistering backhand cross court for the winner. Styles in the near court shows why she was the number one seed, showing off her backhand. On this point, Styles again uses the backhand that McMorris can't return as Styles moved on to the finals. Her opponent would be either Davina Long in the near court or Lindsay Gross. Gross moves to the net behind the backhand and wins the point with the volley. Long, receiving serve, uses a nice forehand to win this point. Long again receiving serve, wins this point as Gross's shot goes into the net. Gross would come back with a deep forehand that is returned long. Gross would win the match 
and move into the finals. In the finals, Styles went on to capture the title, winning 8-1. Long went on to win the third place match. In the doubles tournament, Northside's Angie Callahan and Elora Grochowski took on Long and Buck Morris in one semifinal. Here, after a nice rally involving all four players, McMorris smashes the ball for the point as the Blair duo moved into the finals. So it was up to Bianca Loweiser and Tawana Spencer to try to spoil this Blair party. Here, Gross with the serve and Styles with the volley puts the point away. Styles and Gross won this match and also took the tournament title, defeating their Blair teammates. Field Hockey Championships at Powhatan had the Blair Clippers in green taking on the Isaiah Gardens Rockets. Blair had an undefeated regular season going 5-0 and defeated Norview 9-0 in their semifinal game. While the Rockets finished with a record of 4-1 in the regular season and got to the final by defeating Northside 4-0. The Rockets started out strong and took a one to nothing halftime lead. But in the second half, Blair came out with all sorts of pressure. Goals by Libby Collins, Bay Dewey, and Nina Allen Sun Norin helped Blair to the tournament title and an undefeated season. baseball tournament was held at Maury High School. The matchup was the top two seeds as Northside took on Blair. The stars of Northside were the number two seed and they finished the regular season 4-1. In their semifinal matchup, they defeated Lake Taylor 14-7. The Clippers of Blair went undefeated in the regular season at 5-0. Their semifinal game was a close one against Isaiah Gardens, but they won 7-6. Under clear skies, these two teams went back and forth, with Northside holding a 6-5 advantage going into the bottom of the fifth. Solid performances by Aaron Johnson, Brendan Shea, Shane Hanchi, and Haley Baker helped put Northside up 6-5 in the top of the fifth. Looking for more, Jacob McVeigh had to pop up but a heads up play by Daniel Dietrich to turn two and keep Blair down by only one run. Bottom of the fifth and the Clippers rally. A hit by Philip Crawley, then Justin White got a single. Vincent Bashera gets a single as well. Daniel Dietrich outruns the first baseman to the bag. And Jeffrey Shoemaker smacks a single into center field as Kennedy Jones motors around to beat the throw home. Blair scored five runs in that inning to lead 10 to six, going into the sixth. Final out of the game, and Blair secures the first ever middle school baseball championship. With me in the studio is Janet Kennan, Athletic Director at Azalea Gardens Middle School. Welcome. Thank you. Janet, before we get in to talk about middle school athletics, let's talk a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about Janet Kennan. Well, I'm originally from Selma, Alabama, born and raised. I also received a four-year scholarship at Tuskegee University. 
and I there where I uh, played volleyball also, and also track and field. I won the nationals in track and field throwing the shot put uh, in 1987 and also 1988. And then I moved on to Maryland, from Maryland to here. And I've been teaching with Norfolk Public Schools now for a total of about 15 years. I've been the athletic director at uh, Lafayette, well, I know the middle school, that's why I started off. I was there for eight years. And this is my first year at Isaiah Gardens Middle School as the athletic director. All right, well, your first year, you've, you've done a lot of nice things at Azalea, and um, we're glad that we have you as part of our, you, you, you're one of the veteran athletic directors for us at the middle yes. school level. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> let's talk about middle school athletics. And let's, before we talk about what, what our fifth graders need to know, let's kind of recap what we saw this year, because this year was a change, yes. and it started with the closing of Lafayette yes. and, and not having that team um, uh, in our league, per right. se. So talk a little bit about some of the changes happen, that happened in middle school athletics. Well, what were some of the changes that took our program to a 16 program, so that cut back on a lot of our sports. So we end up uh, changing, we end up getting, turning uh, softball and, and baseball were club sports. Now they're competitive sports. And this was our first year we had our championship competition for mm -hmm. softball and baseball. So it's really, really on the rise and a lot of things, great things that's been happening. Yeah, and those two sports, you know, we've had them at club level for probably about mm -hmm. six years yes, now. Uh -huh. And uh, to have those first championships, uh, they were really, uh, they were very good tournaments. Uh, right. A lot of, lot of spectators, a yes. lot of fan support. Um, right in those two sports. So uh, that's definitely been a, a benefit exactly. uh, mm -hmm. for the athletic program moving forward. Exactly. So, <clears throat> all right, let's look at um, th this upcoming year. Okay. And we have some fifth graders that are now gonna be transitioning into middle schools. And so tell us what they need uh, to know about uh, middle school athletics. Okay, coming into the program, they need a physical. The physical, so parents can get the physicals this summer if they like. Anything after May 1st is considered good coming into September. So it's a good idea to get those physicals done during the summer because football is coming up and that's going to start like the last week of August. So it's very important to get those physicals in. And they automatically qualify as far as like with the grades. Mm -hmm. They automatically come from elementary to uh, middle school. They automatically qualify as far as like being able to play with the requirements as far as that. But after the first semester, the second semester, they would need a 2.0 GPA. Yeah, and that's important. So right. when, when an athlete, a student athlete coming into the middle school mm -hmm. as a fifth grader, they, we kind of open the door for them. We yes. want the, to engage that student mm -hmm. and give them opportunities. But there's also um, the academic portion, exactly. which is very important that they have to establish a 2.0 right. and they have to pass three of their five block classes exactly. in order to be eligible for that second mm -hmm. semester. Right. So <clears throat> talk a little bit about what is offered uh, in each season for the student athlete. Okay, in the fall season we have football, we have boys and girls volleyball, and we also have boys uh, tennis. That's for the fall sports. Mm -hmm. And so, like I said, they must have uh, also uh, taken the concussion video. Yeah, and that's, that's important too. Yes, so that's, that's very important. So the physical and that concussion education mm -hmm. prior to the start of those sports uh, exactly. in order to even try out mm -hmm. right. uh, is, is necessary. Is, you, you must have those things. Exactly. So we have, we have the fall season. Now we have the, our next season is winter one. What opportunities do we have at winter one? Winter one sports, we also have, uh, coming into winter one, we have uh, the boys and girls soccer team that's going on. And we also have uh, debate. Mm -hmm. That's a debate, that's a club sport. Okay, so winter one, we have, you mentioned soccer, the club sport of, of debate, and that's an activity, mm -hmm. and then we have wrestling. Yes. So moving on to winter two, uh, what, what sports do we have then? Winter two sports, we have boys and girls basketball. That's going to be uh, pretty big. Uh, also, we have uh, competitive cheering. That's uh, where the girls, you know, cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. Also, we encourage boys also to uh, try out and come out as part of the uh, stunts and different uh, activity that we're doing with that. Okay, so our middle school cheering program, that competition cheer is a big yes. event for us. Yeah. And we've had uh, Cassandra Payton on yes. there who's, who's organized that. Mm -hmm. um, in the past for us, and that's very successful. We had a very big turnout right. this year, yeah. All right, so another activity at, at the uh, winter two is forensics. So right. that's another activity mm -hmm. that 
uh, along with debate that exactly. uh, student athletes uh, can participate exactly. in. Exactly. And now in the spring, which we just wrapped up, and mm -hmm. which um, you know we had some highlights here. Oh, yeah. We had uh, field hockey, mm -hmm. uh, obviously baseball, which is a new mm -hmm. sport for us. Right. Uh, uh, girls tennis, and then boys and girls track. Right. Uh, which is another uh, popular uh, event uh, exactly. for us. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of good things, a lot of a lot of offerings mm -hmm. um, uh, for the student athlete. Uh, so um, we look forward to uh, uh, next year. Yes. Um, we want to encourage the, the, the families to check out that website because, again, those physicals yes. are listed there. Uh, the information on concussion education is there. Mm -hmm. So uh, <clears throat> we'll be ready for them when, uh, when that first day of practice starts. And we try to get those sixth graders to come out right away because we can develop them from sixth grade to the eighth grade. So it's very important that they're really interested in a sport to come out and try out for that in sixth grade because mm -hmm. we build each year. It builds up and that way they can go on to high school and be successful in that sport as okay. well. That, that's a good lead in there. Mm -hmm. um, you, you've been involved in middle school athletes for about eight years now yes, that you um, mentioned. Um, how has that benefited our high school programs? What, what have you seen over the past year? Have you seen some of our student athletes move on to that, oh, to that yes. next level and, and even yes. to the, to the yes. next level? Yes, we have. And we have a lot of coaches that are getting involved from the high school level coming over and getting involved with those students because we want to stress to students that they are students first mm -hmm. and athletes. That's why it's student athlete. They make sure we have to make sure they are ready academically as well. We don't want to set them up for failure. So we believe strongly in academics. Okay. We make sure that they get that covered and then we can move them on and advance them. And we just basically, middle school is more of a fundamental developmental type situation where we're developing them and getting them ready for high school. Mm -hmm. So the coach has been doing a great job as far as, as far as we get coaches in there that really know about those sports and try to help develop them and to be successful. Okay. Well, Janet, um, again, you, you've been very successful. We want to hope we hope you continue that, yes. and we look forward to another great middle school season next right. year. And I thank you also. Right. You've been doing a great job with us as the athletic directors. You really, I mean, as far as from the first day as the athletic director, I mean, I've learned so much under your, your uh, umbrella, and mm -hmm. you really taught me a great deal. You that, know, that's very it. nice. And, and, and I thank, thank you. you. All right. <laughs> All right. More NPS Now after this. highlighting our top graduates from Norfolk Public Schools. And with us today is Stacy Dowdy of Booger T. Washington High School and Tiffany Adams of Booger T. Washington High School. Welcome ladies to NPS Now. Thank, Thank you. you. Great, great. I'm glad to have you on the show today. And Stacy Dowdy, you are the valedictorian. Yes, and I Tiffany am. Adams, you are the salutatorian. Yes, I am. Congratulations Thank to you, you both. Thank you. I know, are you excited and are you just like, I'm so ready to graduate from Booger T. Washington yes. High School? Yes, <laughs> very, very excited. <laughs> What's it like to get ready to graduate? Um, it's it's nerve wracking because you know it's that part of time. It's that time where you're moving on. Like you don't. It's no more hold, hand holding. It's no more. You know, just your teachers. You know, letting you get away with stuff if they let you get away. Like you're getting ready to go into the real world now. So you really, you get ready to do things on your own. So it's it's really nerve wracking, but it's it's fun. It's How fun. do you feel, Stacy? Um. I'm nervous for the same reason that she pointed out, you know, there's no more guidelines, you know, we kind of have figured it out by ourselves, but I'm very excited because I know like the next chapter of our lives are going to be so many things that we've been anticipating, waiting for, and getting ready for for so long now, and I'm just, I'm really excited to see like everything else that's getting ready to happen for us. So with, com with graduation from high school comes college, right? Yes. yes. What college did you all select? Um, I'm going to Virginia Wesleyan College right here in Hampton Roads. Great. And I'll be at Towson University in Maryland. Okay, what's your major's going to be? I'm going to go in undecided, but I think I'm going to lean towards English with my concentration on literature. Okay. What and I'm going in, I'm starting um, business administration and management, and then in my sophomore year, I'll be able to transfer to dance with the K-12 concentration. Really? Yes. That's great. Did you all receive any scholarships? Uh, yeah, I actually got a full um, tuition scholarship to Virginia Wesleyan. 
Oh, that's exciting for yeah. you. And that's not the only honor that you got recently. The Virginia Pilot uh, surprised you with something. Yeah, I was a finalist for their um, Virginia Pilot scholarship, and so I got to go and interview, and they gave me a lot of great gifts for being a part of that program. So it was really, it was really nice. So how many students were you competing against? I believe it was seven or eight other students from the area, but um, maybe about six. So what did it take to become the valedictorian and the salutatorian? <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of studying, but also um, more than anything, just um, the want to do well and the want to excel academically. Um, I love education. I love learning. Any bit of information you give me, I'll take it and I'll hold it forever just because I think it might be important someday. Um, and so I think what's really brought me to this point is my love for just education, just knowing that like I want to do well. I want to learn as much as possible while I'm here. How about you, Tiffany? I think um, definitely the determination. Like you definitely have to be determined because there are so many different that just a lot of, what's the word I'm looking for? Distractions. Yeah, distractions there you go. up there. <laughs> just a lot of distractions, especially in high school. You know, that's the time where you find yourself and you find your friends. So you definitely have to be determined and you have to be focused. And that'll get you to a, a better place. <laughs> if you had one word to describe yourselves academically, what would that be? Mm. Mm. That's hard. <laughs> <laughs> that is or hard. Or just in general. How long have you guys been with Norfolk Schools? My whole life. Your whole life? Mm -hmm. yeah. Where'd you start? Um, well, I went to preschool at the Norfolk Ten Technical Center, um, and then I went to elementary school at Willard Elementary. Yeah, I've been here all my life as well. I started out at Green Hill Farms Christian Academy, mm -hmm. and then I went to Poplar Halls, and then the academy at Meadowbrook. And then now I'm at Booker T. And we actually met at Meadowbrook <laughs> yeah, in did. seventh grade. Really? Yep. Mm -hmm. So you've known each other all this time. Yep. Yeah. It's been a while. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel Norfolk Public Schools has prepared you academically? Um, it's definitely given me like um, a very well-rounded view of the world, I guess you could say. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I know Norfolk is, you know, only but so big and there's so much more world out there, but mm -hmm. I feel like our city is so diverse and I've come in contact with so many different students and teachers and faculty administration that have been from everywhere and have gone through all different kinds of life experiences. So I think being a part of Norfolk Public Schools has really helped me shape my view of like, I guess, just diversity around the world and being, like, open to anything or anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially with the, um, the different programs in the schools, like with Meadowbrook before it went to Rosemont, even still, having the academy there, you get to intermingle with people of different races, different cultures, people come in, like she said, from everywhere, and not just the students, as well as the teachers and administrators, and just everybody. And being in Norfolk, it's just diverse anyway yeah. so you never know who you're going to come across and so having all of that in the North Public Schools it's a really good opportunity and it's a really good chance to get to know different people and it shapes you better for what to expect when you go out in the real world. Yeah, so absolutely. what type of student do you think you were at Booker T? Um, definitely determined very um, very determined you know I think we definitely took um, the road less traveled if I can quote Robert Frost um, just because it, it is so easy like she said to get caught up in the distractions and we you know we had no part in that we were you know like from the very beginning we were determined what we were gonna do we were we were both determined to achieve excellence and so I think I would definitely say determined students were, were both that way and along with determined focus, like, like I said before, like focusing is everything. You have to focus and you have to keep pushing on even when it seems like your friends or people that you, you know, other people that you depended on may not be there at the moment. You have to tell yourself that I have to do this for me and you have to focus for yourself. Yeah. What classes do you think were the most challenging this year for you? This year specifically? I would say AP Psychology. Um, which was also my favorite class. It was the most challenging, but it was my favorite um, because there's so much information all at once and there's so many like fine details that you have to remember and it really is just memorization and vocabulary, studying, and really knowing how they all intermingle with one another. It was a very challenging course. My was probably AP government. I've never been 
I've never excelled in history. I don't know why, because it's mainly just remembering. <laughs> but it, AP government has definitely been my most challenging. But it's been insightful, because you really like start to, I've noticed I've started paying attention to like when I watch um, Law and Order, Criminal Minds, and those types of things. And especially like with politics and the news now, I've noticed myself getting more into it. And I say, oh, hey, we learned that in class. Or yeah. I know what they're talking about that. So yeah, it's been my most challenging, but very insightful. I'm going to ask every graduate this question, and what advice would you give a rising senior for their, them academically for the next school year? Um, what you do in the classroom really will shape who you become, um, how much effort you put into expanding your like education and expanding your mind. It'll, it'll shape where you go in life. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today without you know, the determination to want to succeed um, or without you know, every piece of knowledge that I have gained throughout the years. So really, I mean, I know high school is only one portion of your life and there's so many other things that go into making you who you are, but it really does you know, really shape like the habits that you'll form throughout the rest of your life and your behaviors going forward. So definitely don't slack off, be focused, you know, be respectful to your teachers. They're there to help you um, and just know that it, it's important. It's a very important part of your life. It's a very important part of making you who you want to be. Right. I would say don't give up and be willing to make mistakes and learn from your mistakes because I think in high school that's when you know as teenagers we think we know what we're doing and we don't want to hear from any other person you know and especially from adults and teachers these are people who have been down the road before and I think that we oftentimes block out the information but it's better to listen to what they're saying because they're there to help you. And you don't want to give up because your senior year is very stressful. I mean, high school <laughs> itself can be stressful, but your senior year is very stressful. You're getting ready to go off to college, or even if you don't go to college, you know, you're getting ready to make that next step. And so it's going to be times where you're just like, I don't want to do this anymore. I just, I give up. But you definitely don't want to give up because, like Stacey said, high school is a very important part of your life, and it really does shape you. And so by giving up, you, you're missing out. You're going to miss out on your future, and you want to have a better future. So I would definitely say just keep going. And great advice, listen. ladies. <laughs> great, great advice for your classmates to, to live by. And congratulations on your valedictorian and salutatorian awards. Thank, thank you. you. And great to have you on the show. Thank, thank you. you. And we want to thank you for watching NPS. Now it airs weekly on WNPS Channel 47, or you can view us online at www.mpsk12.com. If you have any great story ideas or information you'd like to share, email us at mpsnews at mpsk12.com. Again, we want to thank you for watching NPS Now.